going on everybody? It's Richard Koberger here, the Blue Collar Nerd, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you a new, at least new at the time of me recording this video, offering from Service Titan called Fleet Pro. So Fleet Pro is a fleet management system, and as the name implies, it is a pro product, meaning it is an optional add-on with an additional cost associated. And Fleet Pro comes in three packages. So we've got Fleet Pro Track, and that's gonna get you GPS location tracking, safety and compliance alerts, geofencing, and driver scorecards. And that's all done through this little piece of hardware that you plug into the vehicle's diagnostic port. There's also Fleet Pro View, and this package includes not only that module that plugs into the diagnostic port, but it also includes a dash cam that is both forward and driver facing. So that's gonna allow you to actually see what happened when some sort of event occurs. And you're also able to pull footage from certain time periods. I'll get into all that later. And then finally, we have Fleet Pro Smart View. And this package also includes a module and camera, but the camera is a bit more powerful. So this camera has some AI functionality that can detect certain driver behavior. For example, if somebody's looking really tired or they're eating or using their cell phone while they're driving or they don't have their seatbelt on, the camera is able to recognize those things. Okay, so with all that said, let's jump into it. So should you choose to sign up for Fleet Pro, it will show up on your main navigation bar here. And when you click in, you'll be looking at something like this. So right now we're under the Fleet Data page under the Vehicle Data tab. So this is where you'll have a list of all of your vehicles. And this list is populated based on the hardware that you get for the vehicle. So when you order some hardware, either the module or the module and camera pair, that's gonna populate a vehicle here on this list. Okay, so if we click into one of these, we get this little fly out here. Here we get some basic information, the serial number of the GPS device, the VIN number of the vehicle, the odometer reading, whether this is an active vehicle or not. And over here on the right, this is where we can assign the vehicle to a driver, as well as map this vehicle to a vehicle that we might already have entered into the trucks and warehouse houses settings. You're also able to add this to a group. So we'll go over how to create groups later. But for example, if you were multi-trade, maybe you'd want to have a plumbing group and an HVAC group and an electrical group, or maybe you want to go as granular as service department versus install department. It's up to you, but you can separate these vehicles out into groups. Okay. And then down here, we get some additional details about the vehicle, things like the make and model. And we can click over here into device data to see information about the hardware itself. Other than that, as far as this table goes, the kind of design element should be pretty familiar from just the rest of Service Titan. So we've got a search bar up here. We've got some filtering options. So if we wanted to narrow our list down, we've got a lot of options here on how to do that. And we've got this edit columns button to edit uh, which columns that we're showing here. So which information that we wanna see, and we can also reorder them here as well. And we've got these checkboxes here that we can then do some bulk actions, things like activate and deactivate, or we can export out to Excel. Okay, now moving on to the next tab, which is driver data. So here we get a list of our drivers and we can click into any of our drivers to get some additional information. So for example, let me click into this guy right here and I can see things like their driver's license number, their driver's license expiration date, but I can also click over here into the scorecard tab. Let's pick a date range that actually has some data here. And then I can see some pretty valuable data about the actual driving behavior of this driver. So we've got things like the distance traveled within this time period, the total drive time, the total idle time. These would be helpful insights for maybe optimizing dispatching, for example, or settling technician disputes. You know, somebody's saying, hey, how come I always have to drive so much more than this person and this person? We can actually pull data to see if that perception matches with reality, you know? And we also get things like hard braking events, cornering events, hard acceleration and speeding. And these things are kind of taken and run through an algorithm to create this total driver score. And this helps keep some accountability if somebody's exhibiting a lot of unsafe driving behavior. Okay, and then finally, we have the most exciting tab on this page, which is the camera data. So assuming that you have a Fleet Pro package that includes a camera, then anytime some sort of event happens, you're gonna get a recording of that event here in this tab. So this demo account has the top package with the AI camera. So you can see that we have an event here where the driver was eating or drinking. That's something that can be detected with the AI camera. We have some hard braking events. And by the way, you'll also get thumbnail previews of all these. And then if you hover over them, it'll autoplay. You can see here that right now I have to hover over the uh, icon to get the thumbnail to load, but that's not expected behavior. That's just a quirk of this early access version that I'm showing you right now. Okay, so let's click into one of these. So here's this hard breaking event that opens up this video player and you see we have the forward facing camera as well as the driver facing up here in the corner. Although if we don't want that, there's a button down here to turn dual view off. Or if we were only interested in one versus the other, there's this swap view button as well as a button to take a quick screenshot down here. Plus we've got the ability to zoom in and out and change the speed of the playback. Okay, so we're looking at a hard breaking event here. So let's play that and see what happened. 
Okay, so we see that the school bus kind of pulled out onto this narrow road, and so the driver braked in order to give the school bus room and avoid a collision. So assuming the driver wasn't also speeding, we might be forgiving about this situation. Now, if we wanted to, we could also download this video right here, or there's also a download button here on the main view. Okay, but what if something happened that wasn't a like triggered event, like hard braking or something? Something that I would wanna see footage of. Well, that's where I can use this request video button here in the corner. So if I click that, I can fill in a request name, which vehicle I'm looking for, the time and date of the footage I want, and the duration, so how long I want the video to be. So as long as the vehicle is on, the cameras are constantly recording, but it's not like somebody in the office can just go full supervillain mode and have all of the live feeds playing on a wall of 100 screens. The system's only going to present you with footage from events like heartbreaking or whatever, but if there's other footage that you want to see because something happens, then you can request it through this workflow. Now do keep in mind that these cameras have a limited amount of storage space, and so they record on a loop. They're constantly overriding their oldest footage. So if you're requesting video of something that happened a long time in the past, you might not be able to get it. Okay, moving on. So next we have the alerts page. So if we want to be alerted when certain driving events happen, we can set that up here. This is a list of active alerts, but we can click this create alert button to set up a new one. And these are all the alert types. As you can see, there's quite a few options. Braking, cornering, idling, speeding, sudden acceleration. And because this piece of GPS hardware plugs into the vehicle's diagnostic port, we can also get diagnostic related alerts. So if the check engine light is on, if the hardware device itself came unplugged, low battery, low fuel, all kinds of handy stuff. So let's just set one up here. Let's set up a speeding alert. So there's two types of speeding alerts, speeding and posted speed limit. So if I choose speeding, that's an alert based on a hard number that I input. So if I say, hey, for no reason should any of my vehicles be going faster than 80 miles per hour, then I could put that in and I'll get alerted anytime somebody's going faster than that. But I could also choose posted speed limit. And then that's gonna send me an alert when the driver is speeding based on the posted speed limit of the road that they're on. And you'll notice down here, we have the option to send that alert instantly or after the speed limit has been exceeded for a certain number of minutes. I would probably set some sort of minute alert just so that we're not drowning in notifications. And you can also set a bit of a leeway threshold. So you can say just the posted speed limit, hard stop. Or you could say posted speed limit plus, maybe we're gonna give them five miles per hour of cushion before we send the alert. Okay, and then over here, we have the option to apply this alert to all vehicles or just to certain vehicle groups. So this is pretty handy. You can apply different rules to different groups. So for example, maybe you wanted to have a new technician group that people stay in for like, I don't know, three months. And maybe you'd be a little bit stricter about what kind of alerts are being sent for the new technician group. Or if you have some drivers that are consistently displaying a very low driver score, then maybe you could make a shit list group and give them a timeout until they learn their lesson. So for this example, we'll choose HVAC new hires. We'll hit next. I have a problem here. Uh, this value has to be between 10 and 99. So we'll make that 10 miles per hour. I can change this to percent by the way. So maybe I want it to be within 10% of the posted speed limit. All right, let's try that again, next. Okay, and now I can select a time range that this alert can be triggered in. So by default, it's 24 hours, seven days a week, but I could also set custom hours. Maybe for example, I didn't want this on weekends or something. I could just set it up like that. I can also have multiple time periods within a day. So if I wanted to build in breaks for whatever reason, I could do that. Okay, let's move on to the next page, which is the notification settings. So we're gonna send the notification alert. Now, right now, the only option for how to receive these alerts is through email. That's as of the time of me recording this video, but SMS alerts and in-app alerts are on the way. So depending on when you're watching this, you might have more options than that. So this is the default email message. This is the information we're gonna get. And we also have the option to type in some additional message. We'll say, please administer verbal spanking ASAP. Okay, and then we choose our recipients who we want to receive this alert. The driver, by the way, can be one of those recipients. And then we click next and we're on the final step, which is just a review step. Okay, now here on this other tab, we have the event report. And this just shows us a report of all of the events that have happened. We can pull that for different date ranges. We have search and filter capabilities, editing of columns, all the stuff that you're familiar with. Now there's actually a different type of alert that we can set up as well, but it's set up on this next page, which is the settings page. So the first tab here is our group. So this is where we set up those groups that we've been talking about. So we've got just a list of all of our groups here and we see how many vehicles are assigned to it. We could click on that number and see all of the vehicles that are within there. Or we could also click into one to make some modifications. But then over here, we have this geofences tab. 
and this is probably one of my favorite features. So let me show you how this works. I'm gonna click create geofence here, and then I get this map where I'm able to draw my own geofence. So what does that mean and what's it good for? Well, a, a geofence is a kind of virtual fence, and when somebody enters that area or leaves that area, you can be alerted about that. So for example, I could draw geofences around all of the supply houses in my area, and that would give me the data to know how long my technicians are spending at supply houses. I could do the same thing with like big box hardware stores or anything really. You can draw a geofence around anything you want. So I can just search here for maybe a certain popular hardware store and I can click on that. There it is, let's name this geofence. We can select a category. So there's some default categories here or we can add custom ones. So let's add a custom one and call it hardware stores. Okay, and then do I wanna track when the vehicle enters this geofence, leaves or both? For this example, I'm gonna choose both. I can check only when the vehicle is moving. For this example, I'm not gonna do that. I am gonna check only if the vehicle is inside the geofence for longer than, let's call it four minutes. Because, you know, we don't wanna trigger an alert just because the technician literally drove by a hardware store. We wanna know if they stayed there for a while. Okay, now I haven't actually drawn my geofence yet, so let's do that. So I have these tools up here. Uh, I can draw a custom shape. I can use a square or I can use a circle. Let me really zoom in here. Uh, I think this is the actual Lowe's. So I'm gonna to choose to draw a custom shape and I'm just gonna draw kind of a rectangle right around this store. Okay, now there it is and I could move it around or adjust the size or whatever I needed to do. If I needed to do that, I could twist it around, whatever I need. All right, now I'm gonna hit next. Again, I could apply this to specific vehicles or to vehicle groups and I could choose whether I want this to be a 24 seven thing or something that's only triggered during custom hours. Okay, we'll hit next. We're gonna choose if we want a geofence notification. Again, at the time of recording this video, the only option for that notification is email, but you might see more depending on when you're watching this. And then finally, a review step. And just to kind of frame the way that at least I think about this is, yes, you could use this information to discipline technicians for doing things they're not supposed to do, spending too much time at the supply house or whatever, but if they're spending a lot of time in supply houses, that means they're going to supply houses a lot. That indicates to you as a manager that there's some sort of problem. Maybe you're not keeping enough stock of certain items. So it's not just for wrist slapping, it can help inform how efficiently your business is running. Okay, last thing here, let me show you how vehicles show up on the map. So right now they show up on the 2.0 dispatch map. There is a custom Fleet Pro map being built out, but at the time of recording this video, this is where they show up. You come to the dispatch board, you click map 2.0. And then we've got this toggle switch down here to show vehicle locations. And that shows where all of my vehicles are. If a vehicle is moving, then this location is updated every two minutes. But if a vehicle is off, then this location is updated every four hours. And of course, more things are coming down the pipeline, things like maintenance tracking. Not here yet at the time of me recording this video, but it's in the queue. But anyways, that's the basics of it. And that's all I got for today. Be sure to hit like if you liked the video and found it valuable. Be sure to subscribe to Service Titan's YouTube channel if you haven't done that already. Hit that bell icon so that YouTube notifies you anytime we upload a new video. Appreciate it. Peace.